Okay, so we've arrived on Cadia now. The fighting has already begun. We're well into the defense of Cadia. And this is where mission two picks up for us. The uh, strike cruiser, the Dart Angel strike cruiser, Sword of Defiance has been shot down. And the Dart Angels were still using the downed cruiser, but it was finally finished off by the Terminus Est of the Death Guard. And they've been forced back to secondary defenses. So here they are, they've, it's been a, a bloody fourth company and they're going to have to take on waves and waves of world eaters. So the joint efforts from the Imperial Guard and the Dark Angels are spread right across these defences. And the know the attacks coming up, they're coming across the field. Everyone is a bit nervous. So as I say, we're playing the second mission of the Fall of Cadia and it is the Sword of Defiance. So it, uh, like we say, it's the fourth company, the Dark Angels fourth company, they've been battered and bruised, they've fallen back, and uh, this mission allows you for uh, free fortifications to defend yourself. So we've, we've uh, put the fortifications out, and the deployment zone is 24 inches all the way into the board. So that's how they are so far forward. So the, the Imperial forces they set up first so the Dark Angels and the Imperial Guard have set up in their trenches so we've got an Imperial Guard team over here with the auto cannon and we've got a unit of veterans Dark Angel veterans in that razor back a three uh, storm bolters and a plasma gun we've got a unit on here with a heavy bolter with the Dark Angels and then we've got a combined unit here two uh, platoon Squads joined together to make a 20 man squad. Two flamers in there, and we've got two Vox casters in there. We've got a Lord Commissar, and he is heading the uh, the army for the Imperial Guard. So he's got the uh, special power sword that gives him plus one strength and master crafted. And he's got carapace armor, and they're joined by a priest to make them fearless. So they're in the trenches, ready to do some fighting. And then extend on the platoon, we've got the platoon command squad with the platoon banner with the some grenade launchers in the Vox and the platoon commander's got a, a boulder. We've got a uh, heavy weapons team, three heavy boulders and then we've got another platoon squad with the auto cannon on this side and then in the forward lines we've got uh, another 10 man platoon squad with a flamer and they're joined shoulder to shoulder with the dark angels, the plasma gun in there, we've got a Dreadnought with a heavy flamer underneath his uh, power fist that's worthy of note and then we've got a god hammer land raider and inside that land raider is the man of the hour so it is the command squad for the dark angels and everyone has what you see and he is the warlord uh, I think his name is Korahil from the dark angels fourth company he is the man of the hour so he's got uh, a relic blade, he's got a storm shield represented by the servo skull, that's what allows him to have a four there. Uh, three plus invulnerable save, and he's got the lion's roar, which is a special sort of combi plasma, it's like a plasma cannon but assault, one shot. Company champion, and we've got the chapter banner, and he's got the storm shield and a power fist. So Cora Hill rolls for his warlord traits, and he's got furious charge, so that's Big benefit for him, he's going to look to chop up some world eaters. Okay, so as you see, the world eaters have not set up. And just as a surprise, we're going to do this one a little bit differently. The world eaters, they come onto the board in their first turn. And uh, because the Imperial player gets free fortifications, the, uh, the Chaos forces, they are unlimited. So as soon as a squad dies, providing it's not a character or a vehicle, they are recycled into ongoing reserves and come back on again. So it's endless wave of chaos versus a defiant stand from the Imperial forces. Okay, it is night on the first turn as well, so the chaos forces will come under the cover of night. And points wise, the chaos player will get three victory points for being inside the Imperial player's deployment zone at the end of the game. So that is the full 24 inch deployment zone where they are now. Per unit. Per unit. So three victory points per unit. So big scores for the uh, Chaos Forces. And the game does last for eight turns. It's not variable. 
so that the Imperial forces are going to have to take some serious stick here. The Imperial forces, to score points, they have to take out a unit. If you fully destroy a unit, just like kill points, you earn a point. But the Endless Tides of Chaos, they're going to have to just beat down the Imperials and then get into their deployment zone on the 8th turn. So, okay, and also in this game we're playing the Empiric Storm Table, so it's the weird and wonderful table that comes the fall of Cadia. Uh, pretty much anything can happen. And the secondary victory points are still up for grabs. Well, most of them we've got uh, Slither Warlord and First Blood is still available. Okay, turn one for the world leaders, the pressure is already on. We kept a secret what was in this army, and it's a fast one. So uh, the main army is basically the Maelstrom of Gorse. We've got four units of eight Berserkers, and they're already on their way. These are fleet and they're running, uh, running sixes and fives, so they're well into the table. And then there's a combined arms detachment of uh, world eaters. We've got two units of eight bikes. They've already turbo boosted right up the table. They're already attacking the flanks so they've pushed hard on the left hand side here and the Imperials are looking pretty worried about that. Uh, we've got the Corn Lord on the bike here, he's got the Axe of Blind Fury so he is ruthless and there's two Melted Guns in each squad and the Spawn have pushed up with them as well, they run a, a good six inches for them as well and we've got the unit of Cultus in tow. So the massive push on the left hand side and the speedy push. So as well, using the World Eaters rules from the uh, new Traitor's Hate, Traitor's Hate, the Traitor Legion supplement, uh, all of the Berserkers, everyone in red who isn't just an ordinary human, are going to be Fearless and Furious Charge and Eternal Warrior, not Eternal Warrior, uh, Veterans of the Long War, that's what I mean. So they're going to have rerolls, hard attacks, and Fearless. So this is really, really strong attack on the left. Yeah, the Warlord. And to top that off, this Warlord on a bike, he rolled a hell of a Warlord trade. He got Eternal Warrior and Feel No Pain. And if that wasn't bad enough for the defences, in beams, a three-man World Eaters Terminator squad, led by the Captain of the Mill, Strum of Gore, or should we say the uh, Chaos Lord. He's got a Power Fist and a Chain Axe, because you can't have Zufa. So anyway, he's that's what he is. And dropped right in on target and they've got three combi plasmas and they're going to be firing at the reservoir yeah here we go okay so that's the roll not even one gets hot roll in there so uh, strength seven against armor 11. okay fours to glance this razor back and there's a one glance three pens this is not good all right so because it's night we're going to get to save those penetrating hits on sixes if we can no, they all go through, so what's the damage? And it explodes, so how far does the blast go? Okay, so straight away there's first blood for the World Eaters and it explodes just two inches, kills a Guardsman. Of course, it's the one with the grenade launcher, so one of the special weapons is gone. And luckily, no casualties for the Dark Angels veterans inside, but will they be pinned? So the Leadership 9, and they pass. So they're not going to be pinned, they're going to be able to fire and carry on the business next turn. So, a quiet round uh, of shooting wise, but the red tide is upon us. And uh, for the Empiric Storms, we did roll that at the start of the turn, but it was uh, to do with uh, psychic powers and, and neither side has any psychic, so uh, that doesn't come into effect. But everything else does, so it's a really hard push for the world it is on this side. It's looking dire for the Imperial forces here.
Okay, so this is turn one for the Imperial forces, and we're rolled again on the Empiric Storms, and again, it's, uh, it's something to do with the Psychers, it's nobody perils, but of course nobody will perils, because there are no Psychers, so two dudes in a row. It might come into play later on in the game, but not at this point. So, uh, because of the attack on the right-hand side, all of the Guardsmen are kind of pulled over to the right, so this unit... The big 20-man squad has uh, only moved three inches down the trenches, so they're not moving fast enough to try and combat these Terminators in the back line. That's all they'll be able to shoot at, really. Uh, this veteran squad are going to have to deal with them as well. Uh, this squad just moves backwards two inches in the trench, again, not too far. So, because the pressure's on and it's looking really bad, the uh, Cora Hill, the commander, company, company master, he's got out of his Godhammer Land Raider and he's going to mount a heroic charge into all of this. If we're going to die, at least we're going to die a hero. And the Dreadnought is going to go as well, eventually get there, hopefully. So we're going to go into shooting. First of all, we're going to do a first rank, second rank order on these Guardsmen, because we're going to have to fire into these Terminators. So do they pass? No, we've got a Vox in there. And we just say pass on it. So they will fire their LAS guns, those mighty LAS guns, into these Terminators. Okay, so all of these guardsmen with first rank fire, 31 shots into the Terminators, 5 wounds. So I suppose that's good for guardsmen. So these 7 on 2s, the Terminators, and they pass them all. So no work from the, from the body of the Imperium. Now it's the Elite's turn, so we're going to fire all these veterans into the Terminators. Right, the Bolters have opened fire on the Terminators, so we've achieved 4 wounds. So the Terminators need to save on the 2. And one Terminator goes down, now we've got the plasma gun to fire. So, hitting on threes, as I'll do this, and he's missed them both. So my dice rolling continues. Okay, these Terminators are coming under even more fire from this tactical squad. We've achieved five wounds with the heavy bolters and bolters. And we do have an ammo crate that gives us re-roll ones. So we did utilise that, but still, only five wounds for the Terminators to save. And we'll see a bad roll there. There's two Terminators go down. Okay, so uh, the Terminator Captain, he does a look out uh, under the last room in Terminator. That gives the Imperials a point. So, I uh, will kill the squad. That is a point. So we're happy with that. In a very grim game. And now we're going to fire this unit of Platoon Guardsmen. We're going to try and put these into this unit of corn bikes. See if we can take down at least one. If we can, it'll be humiliating for them. Okay, so these guardsmen in the trench didn't achieve any wounds on the bikes. It's a really hard task, uh, so that didn't happen. But we're going to fire the sentry gun. This is a, uh, a battle cannon on this, and we're going to land it right in amongst that set of bikes if we can. Will you jink? Yes. Absolutely. So that's a smart thing to do. It is night, so we're going to get a plus one to the jink save, but it's the only play we can make. So we're going to pray to the Emperor for a hit here. And he denies us. It's only uh, ballistic skill 2, a sentry weapon, so it's going to scatter a full 6 inches. Okay, so it definitely feels like the Amber has abandoned us here. We'll try to drop the blast here, scatters a full 6 inches to here, clips one bike, and because it did not the jink, he only had a night save and rolled a 6. So no casualties from that battle wagon, so the Emperor is just not up for the fight today. But Will Corahill, he's the man of the hour, he must do some damage. Okay, so the command squad and the god hammer were up next. Uh, the land raider fails to do anything because the jinked and saved. And then surprisingly it was just ball pistols and a grenade that killed two bikes. So that's pretty good from the command squad I suppose with pistols. Uh, showing everyone how it's done with the most humble of weapon. But now it's Cora Hill, he's going to open up with the lion's roar. So this is effectively an assault plasma cannon, master crafted. So he's going to try and drop it here and try and get five bikes. He must do it. So. Uh, does he get hot? No, okay. It's a good start. Where does it go? If anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Oh, it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Double six. So what we're going to do is we're going to mastercraft that and re-roll that. And we get a hit. So there's five bikes. So wounding on twos on these. Twos to wound. So they're all wounded, so there's five bikes that must save on threes because it's night. And only one goes down. Okay, so 
the Dark Angels and Imperial Guard turn continues. The Dreadnought, we choose to run him because we need to get him into a good position because he's going to have to fight that Lance Cannon at this point is secondary. And uh, over here, these heavy bolters, these fire at those Berserkers in the distance behind the wall and miss. They've got an ammo crate as well to reroll ones, but they're just not on form today. And then uh, these, this auto cannon fires at the same squad, doesn't hit. And this squad here, the Dark Angels, they are in range. And the killed one with the with the bolter from the four bolters and the plasma gun rolled a two, so it didn't hit. So we killed one berserker behind that wall. But now it's the charges, so we're going to have to charge heroically and stupidly into the horde of corn. So uh, we're going to have to come up with some good saves against that overwatch. There's uh, a lot of combi bolters in there and there's two melter guns. So are you going to fire your melter guns or are you going to fire them as combi bolters? I'm going to fire two melter guns, are you? Alright, okay, so do the two melter guns then. Okay, no hits, thankfully, mercifully. And then there's uh, three turning bolters to go. Right, so three wounds dealt out from the overwatching bolters. So we're going to have to take these on the first guy. So he's got an armor saver three. Saves, and again saves and he saves again so mercifully we didn't die there right in the go eight inches right the dark angels command squad goes in and the company champion has to issue a challenge so he uh, goes toe to toe with this uh, aspiring champion on a bike with a uh, power axe so he's going to go last with that power axe and Cora Hill with his Relic Blade will go first. So he's got three attacks on his profile. He's got one because of the, the uh, chapter banner. He's got one for charge and so he's got five attacks in total. And he's hit with three. And he's got Hatred against Chaos Marines because he's got the Deathwing rule. Okay, so he's hit four times there. He's strength six with that uh, Relic Blade. But his Warlord trait was Furious Charge. So we're going to be wounded on twos. He's going to have to do some damage so he gets three and it's AP three so three bikes go down without question right so we've cleared away the rest of the squad of bikes now it's the company champion going before the uh, champion with the power axe so he's got uh, five attacks we've got two on his profile extra weapon one for charging and one because of the chapter banner so here he goes his weapon skill five he's hitting on three whoa okay so we've got three hits and he's strength five because he's got the sword of Caliban. It's not just a regular power sword. So he's wounded on fours here. He needs to get it done. Does it with one hit. Okay, Cor Hill and his command squad only consolidate three inches. So I was hoping we would get back in the trench there and make it hard for these demons coming in at the uh, spawn even. And the bikes would have to take a dangerous terrain, but only all the three. So we didn't quite get there. So we formed up in the best way we can so that's what we're going to have to hold on to so two points for the imperials that turn but it's not that great because we're still very vulnerable on the right hand side here Okay, so World Eaters Horde turn two. Uh, these bikes come screaming around the corner of this trench and they're going to look to take on the veterans because the Chaos Lord and Terminator armor understands just how deadly this uh, the sentry gun is with the battle cannon. So he's going to try and sort that out with his power fist. 
he has furious charge so he's going to be strength nine so he can actually do some significant damage there if he can uh, if he can roll uh, all of the horde moves forward uh, this unit on the right they did run and so did this uh, unit of cultists on the right as well but uh, there's a charge being set up here from these berserkers because these are part of the maelstrom of gore they will get a plus three to their charge range so these can't half shift and Cora Hill's unit of Brave Command Squad to staring down the barrel of the gun here. And then, of course, uh, the ongoing reserves turn up each time you kill a unit, just to remind everyone, they do come back. So the bikes are straight away back into play. So the Terminator's behind them. And then this unit of Berserkers feels that uh, the time of hiding around tanks is over and they've uh, run a little bit just to try and get into the line sooner rather than later. So over here and got to mention but it's pretty obvious the spawn are making their way over the trenches into this guardsman squad so it's notorious these guardsmen against the uh, the spawn the nemesis spawn are really hard to kill with guards with uh, just basic las guns so it's on the shooting phase this unit is snap firing but I'm sure it'll be enough just to tan these uh, veterans they're in for a lot of pain and something very significant, we did the Empiric Storms obviously before the uh, before any rolls were made, I'll just keep on forgetting to mention them. We've got uh, 63 which is Unreality Reigns, so it's going to get very complicated here because in this uh, turn and for the next turn, 1s count as 6s and 6s count as 1s, so this is just going to fry my brain. Okay, so after 6 being 1s and 1s being 6s, for some head scratching. Uh, no wounds achieved on, well, there was one wound, but saved by the veterans, so they're proven to be veterans. Uh, there were snap fire, remember, so it wasn't that much of a uh, volley, but we did save. But it's different circumstance over here. The uh, bikes on this side, the vengeful bikes firing on the command squad from long range, have achieved three wounds. And we're going to do lookout sirs. In fact, we're going to try and take two, we're going to try and take them on this guy here. Okay, so we uh, pass them all. So he's saving on threes. Saves. Oh no, he doesn't because <laughs> six is a one, so he's got to feel no pain because of the apothecary. And he, no, he feels that because six is a one. Right, so he's uh, got one more to save. Uh, wow, it's a save because a one's a six. Right, see, it's impossible to wrap your brain around. Right, the Berserker's squad fired next, so the one on the left doesn't achieve any wounds, but uh, the squad on the right, there's two plasma pistols in there, only one hits and wounds, and one ball pistol hits and wounds. So we're going to save the ball pistol first, and I think we're going to have to look out sir, this onto the uh, company master. So that That's passes, because that one's count as sixes. So uh, the company master saves on a two. And he, he fails, because <laughs> a six is a one. And then he's got uh, feel no pain, because the apothecary. And, it's another, and one. it's another one. So when I do roll sixes, it's to me detriment. So company master takes a wound. That's terrible news. And plasma. then the plasma. Uh, yeah. Here we go. A it's one. A six. <laughs> and a one counts as a six, so it's definitely not cool. Uh, right, so we're just going to try and take this on uh, on our combat shield of six. And it's a uh, one. <laughs> so he's failed that. And then the apothecary, feel no pain. No, if only of the two counted as a five. So he's dead. So that was only pistols, and that's just really took the steam off them. Right, pistols from these cultists next, the ones who didn't run, and two wounds. So we're gonna have to save these on the company master because he saves on a two. And we save. All right. Thank the lion. Okay, the command squad comes under more pressure from the uh, Terminators back from the dead. They fire just the bolt guns. Uh, two wounds, and we're going to have to save these on the banner bearer. So he saves. And that's a fail, because a six is a one. And fail no pain. No, so he's dead. Which is really, really sad moment, because he now can't give... His power fist or invulnerable three, or the plus one attack to the squad now, so they are truly doomed.
Okay, so we're just down to two men in the command squad. We don't do a morale check because we have the death wing rule, so that means we are fearless, so we can't even run away when it's a smart thing to do. Uh, the spawn are now going to charge the guardsmen, so we're going to try and do some decent overwatch. Come on, lads. Okay, so the guardsmen don't do particularly well. Roll, roll load sixes again, but sixes are ones. So no damage done on the uh, spawn, and they're going to go in. But the guardsmen will fight first because they are attacking cover, since this uh, is area cover. And uh, they don't have grenades, so the guardsmen may summon the strength and will of the Emperor here and beat back these spawn, but I doubt it. Okay, so the spawn go in, and now it's time to fight. So the guardsmen do go first because the uh, spawn don't have grenades. Right, so the guardsmen deal out two wounds to a spawn, not enough to kill one, and then the spawn are going to return with seven attacks each. So the guardsmen luckily weren't fear uh, induced in this round, so the spawn are going to hit on fours. Okay. okay, so the guardsmen in return, it's not too bad in fact. The uh, guardsmen have only lost, lost five men, so they've got uh, leadership on a four to make. No, leadership five, because the sergeant is still alive, so uh, he will go. Gonna need a five. And nope, that's an eight, so it's failed morale. And uh, initiative step, uh, oh, one is a six, so that is good actually. <laughs> What's that? Three. Three. Okay, so the guardsmen will get away and they're gonna run away uh, seven inches. Okay, now these veterans are gonna have to weather the storm from these bikes, so we're gonna do overwatch. We've got Grim Resolve, hey, hey. And uh, we're hitting on fives on overwatch because our ballistic skill isn't isn't demi company standard but uh since it's a combined arms attachment we do get a little bit of something so hitting on fives with these five okay so the veterans make it happen a little bit they've taken out a bike with a bolt gun and then we get two hits and two wounds of the plasma guns but the uh bikers did opt to jinx so they have to save two on fours and they fail one because a six is a one so another bike goes down Still not enough. We wanted two with that plasma gun. Right, then the bikes are in. Uh, not a long charge. So only four of them are going to get a Hammer of Wrath. But uh, the Blind Axe of Fury wielding champion of Chaos Lord, he's uh, issued a challenge to the Dark Angels veteran sergeant. And he is way out of his depth here. So it's going to probably cut down the whole squad just by himself. But first we'll do a few Hammer of Wraths and see how it goes. So the Corn Lord on a bike, he's got three on his profile. He's got an extra weapon and two for Rage. And then he's got a Demon weapon, so he's going to get an extra D6 on top of that. So a one Notes. counts as a six. So he's got 12 attacks all by himself. Okay, so it's a total wipeout with Hatred and all the rest of it. Too many attacks to even being close to even thinking that would come through that one with even one guy left. So he's just total clean out. And then on the Gift table he rolls feel no pain but he's already got that so he's definitely feels no pain okay this berserk squad is next to run in and they're only going to need a seven it's a 10 inch charge but the maelstrom of gore gives you a plus three so they're going to need a, a seven inch charge and they've got fleet so are going to re-roll it and they've taken no damage in the overwatch so here they go and a one is a six that's an 11 inch charge so the captain or chapter uh, company master Cora Hill is in hell. Right, so they make the charge and the challenge is underway. So we've got uh, Cora Hill, he's fighting the Berserker champion. Luckily there's no armor cracking weapons amongst these Berserkers, but there's a lot of attacks coming in. But Cora Hill will fight first. He's got three attacks and he's hit them all. Now we're needing uh, twos and a six counts as a one. So we've got two wounds there. And so he's killed the Berserker Champion and one of his friends. Okay, so the Berserkers come in with a sickening amount of attacks. They've achieved uh, 13 wounds altogether. And because we've got two different armor saves, we have to do these one at a time. So uh, this is all on the Apothecary. And six counts as one, so he fails. He's got to feel no pain on himself, and he dies straight away. Well, that was fantastic. At least we can do all these in one hand. Uh, twos to save on Cora Hill. Uh, that's actually saved them all because ones count as sixes. So we're looking at sixes here for him to die, but he's taken one wound. So he's still alive and he's got one wound left. Wow. 
Okay, so Corahill stands alone with his one wound left. Uh, he's fearless, so he hangs on. And uh, the Champion of Corn in the Terminator armor doesn't do any damage to the uh, sentry gun, so it will live on. So we're going to do the uh, consolidation move just to clean that up a bit. And then perhaps the Imperium might be able to attack back here, but the uh, right flank looks like it's totally caved in now. Okay, so everyone's dispersed now from the consolidation moves. And the Imperium is looking desperate all the way down the line. Everyone's out of position to this uh, corner attack on the right. Okay, we're into turn two now for the Imperium. And we've rolled on the Empiric Storm chart again. And again, it's something for Psychers. But again, there is no Psychers. So nothing happens. So onto the movement, uh, we've gotten this full tactical squad out of this bunker here and they're going to have to contribute to the battle. There's just no attack on the left hand side here whatsoever so everyone's moving out trying to get into the battle somehow so we're going to do some runs when the time comes. Uh, this, we're still holding the line at the front here, we can't risk uh, letting that buckle and being surrounded. And the, uh, the true men of the Emperor have moved out of the trenches, full six inch move and they will bring their guns to bear on this bike squad and humble them entirely. Uh, this squad rallies, so they're going to snap fire and contribute. They've been uh, enthused by the, the masses of bodies on the left hand side. And the Dreadnought's going to have to come round the side here through the uh, Land Raider, through that gap, and join this combat to try and rescue Corrie Hill. We can not let the uh, company master go down without a fight. Okay, we'll start the shooting and we'll start the running. So the uh, Dot Angel squad runs four inches into that trench and this unit runs a little bit, just four inches. But we'll open up with some guns. We've got the heavy bolters firing and we fired the grenade launchers. The grenade, grenade launchers killed a berserker and we've got some wounds from the heavy bolters. A really good performance from the heavy bolters. So these berserkers over here are saving on threes. And uh, two, th four go down because six is a one still until we do another Empiric Storm for the Berserkers. So that is a really, really good performance from those heavy bolters. Love it. So in this area of the battlefield, the uh, rallied unit causes a wound on this spawn. And then we've opened up with the bolt guns on the spawn and caused three wounds. They're going to need to save on fours because the nearest is in area to risk. And oh, oh, that is pretty good because sixes six. count as ones and ones count as six. So it's actually good. <laughs> yes, there's two wounds on the lead spawn. They've all got a, a certain amount of wounds each, but uh, they're just hanging on. Okay, so the spawn will live. The heavy bolt uh, didn't achieve any wounds, so they've all got uh, a wound each. Some of them have two wounds. It's pretty annoying not even taking one of them down. They've been shuffling quite nicely in that trench to make sure they're not dying. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to fire. This LAS cannon on Power the Machine Spirit from the Land Raider uh, through the gaps up at the Chaos Lord. He will get a 5 plus cover save, but he's got a Terminator invulnerable save of that anyway, so that's what we'll do. Okay, LAS cannon shot. Can we insta kill him? It's a miss because 6 counts as 1, and we've missed totally because that's just what we do. <laughs> right, we're going to fire the uh, heavy bolter, the twin linked heavy bolter, at uh, the cultists. The ones bearing down, uh, just these ones here. On a good day, we might be able to cause a morale check on them. So, six counts ones, and they all hit. Uh, two's to wound, and only one wound, so we've killed one cultist with that, and snap firing that last cannon at them as well. No, because a six counts as a one. So, just one cultist dead. So, 250 points kills a single cultist. Damn it. Okay, the guardsmen are going to show everyone how it's done. Going to uh, do from the platoon squad first rank fire order on all of them to fire at the corn bikes. So can we get this off? And we do. So we're going to fire double shots, uh, some rapid fire, and at these bikes. So after all of these last guns, some rapid firing, and with first rank fire, only achieve three wounds. So two on threes. And wow, that's pretty good actually because uh, <laughs> three dead, three dead. <laughs> All right, we're getting down to the last shot of the turn now. This uh, battle cannon 
We'll shoot at these berserkers again. It's too good of an opportunity to miss, so we're going to try and take out that full squad in one blast. Here we go. Oh, Scat this. Uh, <laughs> seven, seven inches, so it's going to go five inch scatter. Right, so that template scatters uh, five inches over there and doesn't get a soul. So again, this battle cannon is not doing its job. So the last thing we did was fire a plasma gun from this trench here over at the bikes and they didn't jinx so we did kill one. Now the last thing up our sleeve to do is this dreadnought's going to try and charge through this gap on a five into this combat. Come on, don't let me down. And he's in because that six is a one. <laughs> That's just what we got there with an inch to spare. Okay, so let's get this combat underway. Right, so no wound from the Dreadnought's Hammer of Wrath, but Corahill will now fight. He's hit on three. And luckily, ones count as sixes, so he's hit twice. Twos to wound, and two, two wounds. So there's two Berserkers dead. Great stuff. Okay, two Berserkers down. The Dreadnought's going to fight now. He's got five attacks on the charge. And he's hit a lot, so well, three hits, that's, that's a lot for me. <laughs> Two's to wound. Oh man. One Sixes count as ones, so one berserk killed with a power fist. Well, that was anticlimactic. Now we've got the uh, berserkers, one attack each, and they've got extra weapons, so two attacks a piece here. Okay, so there's actually four berserkers fighting, because they do attack at the same time as the dreadnought, and they've caused two wounds on Cora Hill. He's got the Artificer Armour, so he's going to need to save these. He's only got one wound left. And luckily, a one counts as a six, so finally, I've got a blessing from a one. So he's going to survive. He is turning out to be a bit of a hero here. So he will survive, and those uh, Berserkers will hang on because they are fearless. Great stuff. Okay, in the last combat in the turn, uh, because he's still in base to base with the, uh, the structure, he attacks again and it achieves a single glance. So this uh, battery has only got one, uh, two hull points left. So the red tide continues for the world eaters in turn three. Uh, moved a few things and we've rolled the Empiric Storm Table and everything on the battlefield has plus one toughness. So uh, the Guardsmen are now toughness four, Marines are toughness five. So things have got a lot harder for, for people. And uh, the Corn Berserkers are going to invoke Red Rain to rule that the Maelstrom of Gore have. They're going to attack at the start of the movement phase without reply from the company champion so he wants to get rid of the company champion to try and uh, the com company Come master on. to make way for melted guns on the dreadnought so he's got six attacks for these corn berserkers hitting on fours and that is four hits and because everyone's toughness five now they're having a wound on five so off you go so one wound we've got rid of the uh ones of six and six is ones now so Finally some normality, but he's taken a wound, so he's going to have to save on his Artificer Armour on a 2+, plus, and he does. Thankfully, that 6 is 1 and 1 and 6 is gone, so it would have been him dead if not. But he will fight on, and he survived the Red Rain. Right, so the rest of the movement phase after the uh, Red Rain. Uh, the Berserkers and Terminators get behind the wall here, there's only 3 Berserkers left. And the bikes are going along, they're going to look to put some Melter Guns on the Land Raider, so the 
bringing the guns to bear this turn. Uh, these Berserkers move on forward and the Cultists are starting to advance. The squad on the left has ran just two inches, but this squad's going to look to try and get in on the company champion. And these Berserkers ran a little bit and these bikes have now split up. So the Corn Lord on a bike, he's uh, gone this way through the trenches past his uh, dangerous terrain test. He's going to look to tackle these uh, tactical marines. And there's still uh, one melter gun in there, so he's fearing the battle cannon, even though it's done nothing this entire game. Uh, it might end up doing nothing because one melter gun shot is enough to bring that down. And the Lord is going to come and finish this squad off by himself, the Terminator Lord. And the spawns made their way out of the trench and they're going to try and take on the mass of bodies of the Imperial Guard. So I really don't know what's going to happen here because the Imperial Guard are plus one to the toughness. So they're, they're going to be fairly formidable, dare we say. Okay, so these bikes uh, open up fire first and they are still on snap fire. So the snap fire, the melt the gun and it misses luckily. So the uh, battle cannon is still functional. So we've got two melt the guns from these bikes uh, just on the on the wing there, they're going to fire at the land raider, so hit on threes. So both hit. Okay, so the colours correspond to the uh, the different shot, so go on. Right, so all of them penetrate with the uh, most devastating wall I've seen. And the effect... Uh, five plus two is a seven, so it's going to explode. Okay, so the Land Raider explodes. Everyone just about comes out alive in this exchange. Uh, the Lord takes a wound and saves, but we'll lose a Marine in the blast. So the Dark Angels come out and they'll lose an end of that one. In both occasions, lost the tank and lost a Marine. So that's the end of the shooting phase for the World Eaters in turn three. It's a total bloodbath on this side. The uh, right flank has truly collapsed. And now it's into uh, assault for the World Eaters, so we've got the Spawn going in, the Chaos Lord no doubt, and this one on a bike. And then are the Cultists going to join this combat here? Yep. Okay, so it's all happening. Okay, so all the Cultists made it in on a quite a big charge. So the Company Master, he will attack the Cultists because they're going to come in with a lot of attacks. So he's going to hit on threes. And just one hit. And he doesn't wound, so that was massive, massive failure from him. Okay, we've got the Dreadnought and the Berserkers, because he's still in base to base. And he only hits once, and he manages to kill one. So it's all of the rest of the horrible chaos to attack back now. Right, we've got three Berserkers attacking the uh, Company Master back. So he's toughness five, remember, so he will be a little bit tougher, but this is a mountain to climb here, so they're hitting on fours. And just two hits and wounding on fives. Can they do it? There's one. So one could be all the need. So he's seven on a two. And he saves. But now he's got to take a whole lot of stick from these cultists. They've got a lot of attacks. They've got rage. Right, so four attacks each of these cultists. So they've came in with a tidal wave of attacks and uh, because these toughness five they were having to wound on sixes so that's the only thing that's uh, sort of kept him in any shape he's got four wounds to save in any case and he's saving on twos he's on his last wound remember and he saves them all so he will survive Stunning, man. he's he's exhausted he couldn't hit himself but he's just letting that servo skull take all the hits i think Okay, so surprisingly we've actually won the combat by one because we killed one Berserker. But uh, forgot to do the challenge, so the cultist leader should have challenged, but uh, we forgot about that, so we're just going to leave it. So they're going to take a morale check on a seven, these cultists, because they've still got the leader eight, so minus by one. And it's still a failure, so they're going to run out of combat, but we're not going to be able to sweep them because we're still going to be locked in with those nasty Berserkers. Okay, so the corn biker champion somehow pops some sort of whaley and gets up that <laughs> up a height, uh, kills a, a guy with hammer of wrath straight away. But does his demon weapon roll? Rolls a one, so he's gonna have to roll uh, for a sickle save here, see if he can stop that demon weapon from being unruly. No, he <laughs> takes takes his wound to his own axe, and now he's weapon skill one. Okay, so the. Uh, 
even though the demon weapon uh, becomes unruly and his hand gives him a wound and weapon skill one he still goes on to kill nearly all the unit bar one he could have done it but uh, he came away alive he's passed his morale check unfortunately for him because he's now going to die gruesomely to that axe uh, that's one bad thing about having stubborn is you will hold on even against your own will so he's going to be locked in combat not going to be able to be shot next turn but he has suffered his first wound by his own hand Okay, so the Corn Lord and Terminator armor now makes it into combat, makes it through all the Overwatch, and he is now going to put these to the test and to the axe. Okay, so this Corn Lord and Terminator armor makes short work and claims some more skulls for Corn. Unworthy skulls, only Guardsman skulls, but he's happy to have them all the same. Okay, now the spawn are the next ones to go in, and uh, they've maneuvered themselves again to the maximum effect. So the first rank only has a single wound and the back rank already have taken two wounds so uh, it's up to some incredible overwatch from all of these guardsmen there's two flamers in here but with them being increased toughness because of this empiric storm the task has even become harder so the spawn make it in with no damage from the overwatch uh, toughness six is just too too hard at this point but as a blessing uh, all the guardsmen are now uh, toughness four because of this uh, storm and it's going to mean that the guardsmen were always going to be wounded on sixes against these spawn, but the spawn are now going to be wounded on threes against these guardsmen. Uh, so it's actually worked out for the ordinary human, <laughs> this uh, warp storm, for this time. And we won't have to take a fear test because we've got a priest in there and he makes us fearless. Okay, so a bit of uh, mirror imagery going on here. The spawn have rolled reroll wounds, or poison rather, against the guardsmen. And the priest said a prayer and is given everyone to reroll wounds as well. So both sides are going to be rerolling wounds. And this is going to be a really bloody fight. Okay, so the spawn roll high on their random attacks get a five. And they've got rage, so it's seven attacks each. Not what the guardsmen want to see. And uh, managed to convert to 15 wounds. So the guardsmen are going to have to save 15 wounds on fives. And doesn't look too bad. Right, so that ended up being 10 failed armor saves. So 10 have dropped, but they will fight back as we're all initiative step 3. So we'll leave this one to the Lord Commissar. He is uh, he's well up for this one. Okay, that was a combat to be proud of for the Guardsmen. They killed 3 spawn. And uh, the Commissar managed to put 2 wounds on them himself. So he led the way for them. And uh, the Arfealist, they did lose the combat by 5, but... Uh, the preacher still makes them fail, so they're on to the next victim. The spawn's only got one wound left. But it's upsetting a little bit because we're still locked in combat. We're into Imperial turn three now. Again, we're all on the Empiric Storm table. And again, it's something to do with the Psyche to uh, turn into a spawn, but no psychers <laughs> so we've just continued with our movement phase so the platoon squad drops back a little bit the uh, command platoon uh, the dark angels are going forward the big squad of 10 everyone's trying to pull round to make something happen on this side because this side is just totally fallen now we've got the brave commissar leading his brave men into this last ditch effort against the spawn and we've got the brave uh, Cohill Cool. He's not called Corheal. <laughs> He's called Corheal. <laughs> <laughs> Correction, Master Corheal. That's his name. And he's making his final stand. He's making it well, but not well enough. He's still tied in combat. And the counter result is just on the horizon here from everywhere. Okay, so the Emperor has truly abandoned us on this side. Not one successful hit from all of these uh, troops onto those bikes. Didn't force them to jink or anything. We did fire plasma guns and whatnot. Uh, the heavy bolters luckily did pick up some slack and killed a single bike. Uh, the plus one of the toughness is still in effect so it's everything's just such a hardship here. And now we've got the battle cannon to fire for the third time. Will we scatter into nowhere or will we get a hit? Right so we'll select our target for the battle cannon. We're going to go all the way across here and we're going to try and drop it on this berserker's head and if we can hit then 
that should be all of the unit if we can hit and we scatter six inches again off into the only place where there's no <laughs> chaos okay so shooting phase is just not to be at all so we're going straight on to the assault phase so we've still got this combat to go on surely this will be the round that will finish off these berserkers and score a point and uh, surely we should finish off this spawn and uh, this, guy, this guy's clearly going to take out this chaos load on the bike right so the company master he will finish off this unit he's got three attacks and he's hit twice so he's wounding on threes because it's still toughness five and yes he does kill them so they are gone that is a point for the dart angels okay so the corn lord on a bike almost does himself in again uh, rules are one for the demon weapon but it is enough just to kill that last marine so he's going to go on his merry way and uh, the spawn he's got a four plus save and he's failed to kill any guardsmen so it's now time for the guardsmen's return uh, we've done another prayer for reroll wounds so he will kill this monstrous abomination so we're going to do the commissar he's got uh, four attacks he's hitting on threes and it is master crafted because it's the blade of conquest i think that's what it's called anyway he's hit four times and it's strength four because it's plus one to your strength and but it's against the plus one strength of the toughness so it's cancelled it out so it's still wound on sixes and we re-roll because of the prayer well there we go double sixes from the commissar he gets his wish well he's truly embodying the emperor he's not putting up with any of this uh spawny stuff yeah Okay, we're into uh, Chaos turn 4 now, and we've had a break in the Empiric Storms again. It's another one to do with the Psyker, and uh, so no effect. So everyone is just normal for once. So it's happened. The Company Master has been surrounded by everyone. This unit rallied, so they're not going to be able to charge, but we've got two Melted Guns trained on the Dreadnought from the bikes now. Uh, this unit of Berserkers moves around the back and they're joined by the Chaos Lord in Terminator armor and so does the uh, Bike Lord so both these two are contesting for this worthy skull so who knows who's going to get out of these two but I'm sure his head will just roll off any second now and we've got another Melted Gun he's going to have another go at the uh... I'm sure this is, must be some sort of heretic emplacement because it's not working for me so I'll be glad to see that go when it blows up with the melted gun. And uh, this unit ran. And the spawner back. Yeah, but they haven't run yet. Okay. Do that now. So they're going to run three inches. And small movements from uh, the backfield. Okay, so we thought it was these two lords contesting for uh, the skull of the, uh, the captain. But the cultists have other ideas. They've had one snapshot, hit, and wound. So he's going to save on a two. And he does, he wasn't embarrassed by the cultists there, that would have been absolutely terrible, a woeful end to such a brave effort. Okay, so no sense of glory for Corn here, they're still going to try and shoot him. So the uh, Corn Lord on the bike has shot him and caused a wound, so he's going to have to save again. And he dies finally, so... He finally goes down, And but that wasn't a glorious kill, I wouldn't put that in a glorious book of Corn. <laughs> Kills a kill, a skull is a skull. No, nope, he, sh <laughs> he was shot in the back by a corn lord. That's, that's, his, uh, that's his burden to carry. So the painful story continues. Two melted guns fire, two hits, two penetrations. We're going to see what the results are. If he's going to blow up. Nope, he doesn't blow up. There's two. He's immobilized and he is now uh, snap firing. So it didn't even have the courtesy to blow up and die and take a load of bikes with him. So the corn followers are continuing the trend of shooting these heroes in the back. So two plasma pistols, 
over the trench wall, uh, the Dreadnought will get a save of four. He's penetrated twice, so note they both go through. So does he explode this time? On the six, he, he explodes. He's going to explode three inches. Okay, so not the Titanic explosion that uh, we wanted it to be. Wanted that sacrifice to be worth it, but he only kills a bike in that explosion. Not even a heroic death from him, so much. And then the last melted gun fires and causes this uh, gun emplacement to now snap fire. So it's going to be out of action for a turn. So it's not going to be able to fire a shot at anybody, which is no difference to me at this point because it hasn't hit. So another turn of it not hitting, well. It's too late now, isn't it? It's just a matter of can we even survive another two turns? Can we even make it to turn eight? It's halfway in and we've pretty much lost everybody. We've only got a couple of squads left. We've got uh, three platoon squads and a heavy weapon squad and one and a half Dark Angel squad. So Mm, it's going to be hard to push anything out of our deployment zone, but we will continue because we are stubborn. Okay, so the Imperial turn 4 now, it's just looking beyond even coming close. So what we're going to do is we're going to dilate men. So all of the... Uh, the forces in this area, they're just going to come forward and die with spite. We're going to try and take out the Corn Lord on a bike with all that we can muster here. The Commissar Lord will not tolerate anything less than a death with their Lord. So we've got two flamers set up and some Laz guns to achieve retribution. And we've got the platoon squad moving through cover as well. Still got the heavy bolters set up to fire. And this sentry gun it hasn't even fired a shot. Nobody's came in within 24 of it. So that's just as useful as the other one, it seems. So we're going to go on to shooting phase. We're going to try and kill this Lord. And if we can do that, that's a small victory. All right, okay, so the platoon has issued, the platoon command squad has issued first rank fire on this unit. So we've got a lot of las guns firing at this corn Lord. He will die. We must kill him. Seven wounds, wound on sixes. Oh, look at that, three wounds. So he's seven on threes on his armor save. So he's failed one and he's got feel no pain as part of his warlord trade, of course, because he's the most hard boss ever. So he's taken a single wound and he's got one wound left and we've still got a few things to fire. Okay, two flamers from the guardsmen. They're gonna try and take him down on fives to wound. Achieve a single wound, he's to save on a three, and he does. Now for the ultimate, Commissar with a pistol. Shoot him in the back of the head, come on. Hit him on a two, he's hit, wounded on a five, and he hasn't done it. Oh, well, it was an attempt, a brave attempt by the Commissar and his squad. So the sentry gun is actually in range, opens a fire onto the bikes and causes seven wounds, so can they do any good saves? No, they can't. There's three, <laughs> three go down. Two heavy bolters were in range of the bikes, able to chip off another bike. There's one left. Could we get a victory point out of this? So we're going to fire this squad, all in range, at that bike. So will you, Jim? Because I've got a plasma gun in there as well. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so we'll fire the plasma gun. Hits. It doesn't wound, so we'll have to rely on the bolt guns. Alright, so we'll fire the rest of the bolt guns at this unit and just couldn't get a wound. So he still lives and we're going to allow him to live. We're not going to fire the squad at him, because we're going to fire this squad at the Lord. We need to kill him, that would just make our day. And uh, this squad of platoon guardsmen, they fired at the Terminators and of course, didn't do anything, but high hopes, might have worked. But now we're going to do this squad here at the Lord on a bike. There's no reason for him to jink because he's got a 4 plus save. Uh, so it's just down to dead eye shot. So we're going to do the bolters first. Get two hits. Wound on fives. No wounds. So it's down to one plasma shot to see this happen. So I'm going to change colour of dice to see if I get a better roll here. So he's hit. 
a nice cool blue dice come on wound and that's a one so he gets off scoffery again so that's the end of the imperial tune phase turn four no points picked up there uh, if we did kill him with that squad, we would have picked up a point, but it would have been straight back on the board and shooting us in the side. So we're going to leave him alive until further notice, because that was worth it to try and take out that Lord. But we've got a, a half decent defence, and it's now swung round to the left. But the Commissar squads were out at these are these are putting up the real fight against all of this chaos incursion. Cool. Right, so we are into the World Eaters turn 5 now and they've pretty much got this sewn up. There's just counted as a total of 21 victory points in the corner here and there's not a lot the Imperial Guard can do about it. It's just a brave last stand in this section from the Commissar and he is just looking at a tide of red there. So the another Berserker unit has come back. They've ran 12 and they're just going to see if they can get their axes dirty they don't really need to contribute to the point score here, they're just going to try and chop up as many Imperial units as possible and the Terminators are leading the charge on that, so they've still got the Combi Plasmas to fire so it's going to just be nothing but bloody death over here Right, so the World Eaters Terminators finally let off those Combi Plasmas almost decimate the squad, did go to the ground and got two sixes so there's three remaining but they are uh, now hit the, hit the deck, so they're on snap fire for next turn and it's pretty much all in that corner since those two units ran so now it is the impending doom on this brave commissar he's gonna die with his boots on there's a heavy casualties in the uh, commissar squad of course but they couldn't go to ground just died off bald guns because uh, they're fearless with the preacher so they just took it and now they're susceptible to a charge so who's charging first the commissar is? The biker. The lonely biker okay so we'll uh, do some overwatch. Right, so everyone's in, and we lose a guardsman to the Hammer Wrath hit. And there's a challenge being issued from the Terminator Lord, and the Commissar will accept. He's naive enough to think he might win this one. And there's a sea of attacks coming in from these Berserkers. We've played reroll filled armor saves with the uh, prayer that we've just done. So, passing our, passing our prayers, we're going to need them. We're seeing our prayers it is the end okay so there's been an absolute landslide of attacks here and with the re-rolling uh, filled saves with the prayer the commissar has just saved everything thrown at him he has taken a wound but he has not died yet uh, so he will attack now against the terminator lord but the terminator lord's going to attack with a power fist and then there's a power axe to get through yet so he is up against it so the Commissar fails to damage the Terminator Lord, but in turn the Terminator Lord has five attacks with Power Fist and misses every single one. So this Commissar could be something special here if he can just make it through this uh, Power Axe that's coming through the crowd. It initiative step one. So he's got um, he's got a lot of attacks. He's got five. He's got five as well. So he's hitting on fours and he's oh, done he's every done single good. one. He's got one. So he's wounded on a two. And he's wounded. Alright, so it's going to be strength 6, so this will be insta kill. He's going to need to save on his refractor field of 5. Oh, <laughs> what a hero! <laughs> it's Commissar. It's true, he's done more for the, my morale than the whole army he's put together has done. Okay, he's lost the combat by 3, so he is stubborn, so he's going to be leadership 10. And he passes, so he will continue. To fight in that ongoing combat. Okay, this will probably be the last efforts of Cadia at this rate. Uh, we've jumped the platoon command over the trenches. We're going to try and join this combat in some sort of heroic 
madness. And uh, this unit's coming around the corner here. We're going to try and take on some Terminators. And then this unit of Guardsmen is going to charge in, fix bayonets, and take them to the cleaners. That's what's going to happen. Um, we've got some heavy bolters in support and fire. So it's the day is surely lost, but it's about claiming some, some light of the Emperor out of this. We deserve to uh, be protected by the Emperor. We're going to fight like Cadians. Okay, so this Guardsman squad with the Flamers killed a Terminator, and then we did some snap iron shots from a plasma gun, and we finished off the Terminator, so they're all gone. So our heroic charge ambition of sending in the the uh, bayonets just didn't even have a chance to start, so he doesn't want to hit when he's standing up, but if he goes to ground, he can get double six. So we've learned something about him today. And uh, the platoon squad, they're going to try and charge in, but first, we're going to do this battle cannon shot, will it actually hit in this battle? I'm going to send it home right here. It was last turn. This turn, again, it's got six inches, so therefore it'll miss because that's what it's been doing all game. So I just measured it, that all familiar six inch scatter takes us just out of anything. So the battle cannon is just it needs needs some arc magos to come along and bless it or something it needs the wires putting back in okay we've got this last heroic charge from the platoon command can they get in there oh they can they will join the commissar they do not want to see him go down okay so the suicide charge is on they are in they will fight for Kadia they will not just die quietly so this is the uh berserkers to fight first and it could be, well, it will be nothing like the last turn, I don't think. So the platoon uh, command has died horribly, but what it did, it spared the life of the commissar because the wounds left over could not go on to him because he's a different squad. So the commissar will fight this Terminator Lord and he will kill him. Four attacks. And he's hit them all. He's strength four with the uh, Blade of Conquest. And he's wounded twice. It's not going to be enough to kill him, but it could humble him. So two... Two to save? Two to save. No. Takes him on his Terminator armor with ease. Strikes back with his power fist. He's got three attacks. And he's hitting on threes. So he's hit two. Wounding on twos for insta-kill. He gets one, because he's rolled a one. Can we save on that? All important refractor field. Will the Emperor's light shine on us just one more time? Yes, <laughs> that was six. This is power. Here's the last chance. It's the uh, corn axe. The, uh, not the corn axe, it's just a power axe. Strength five now, corn so it's axe. not going to be instant death, luckily. Let's go then. Hitting on fours, he's only hit ones. And he's wounded on a two. And he does. And he's seven on his refractor field again. Not this time, so he's taken a single wound. Oh, he's taken two wounds now, so he's got one wound left. Okay, he's stubborn, so he will uh, still go his leadership at uh, 10, and he holds on. What a brave soul. Okay, so the world leaders are now moving in, in turn 6. To put the Imperium out of their misery, <laughs> so the uh, the Berserkers are moving forward, and they're going to get into combat this turn. With Spawn coming in from the flank, the last heroic march for these Imperial, and it's going to get extinguished. That light of the Emperor is going out, but not for this Commissar. He will continue to be the hero that we all need, and uh, the rest of the Corn units are going to stay around this area to get those beneficial points. We're still going to attack with the melted gun and try and bring this uh, this down, this Vengeance Weapons battery, but it's been so ineffective, I might as well just leave it alone, I think. Uh, but now it is shooting phase and the assault phase. Right, so charges are upon us. Not a lot of shooting to be done. It's just a melted gun missed over here. And uh, the spawn lost, uh, spawn person in uh, 
spawn person, spawn creature in Overwatch to the Dark Angels, a full 10 man squad there, so they uh, came under heavy fire and lost one. And this humble three man squad took out two Berserkers on the charge, but the champion got all of his lookout, sir, so he's in there with his power sword, and it's probably terminal for these three Marines. And this is just a sure thing, but a full unit of Corn Berserkers in amongst a full unit of Guardsmen. Berserkers attack first. And then there'll be no guardsmen left probably. But they will die for KDN. Okay, easy skulls and blood for the skull throne. And all that unit is trashed by the berserkers. So losing units fast now. This guy with the power sword takes out this unit with ease with his power sword and weathers the attacks back. So now it's the big fight with the spawn and the uh, Dark Angels tactical squad. Okay, the tacticals managed to kill and bring down a spawn, but the uh, came back and returned and killed uh, four tacticals. So the Dark Angels didn't do too well there. And corner now on the loose in the centre of the battlefield now. So it's just looking beyond good. <laughs> now we've got the the ultimate showdown. The Commissar is going to have to come through a third turn of just sheer death fire at him. So he's got uh, one wound left. If he makes it through this, then he should be uh, transformed into sainthood, I think. Okay, so the Commissar's just trying to take a chunk out of him again. He's got four wounds to save on his Carapace armor. So just, just for note, these chain axes aren't really chain axes. They're just close combat weapons. So he does get his armor save of four, and he's got to save all of these to survive. Could he be... No. <laughs> he's tired. He's took it himself out. Everyone just carves through the bat of him. And that is the end of the Commissar. Will he ascend to sainthood? I do not know. Okay, so that is the end of the combat. Everyone's consolidated. And I think that is the end. I don't think Cadia can take any more. There's only a half a unit of tacticals. A very nervous looking platoon. And the heavy bolt is left. So I think it's over for Cadia. I'd have liked to have said Cadia stands, but I don't think they even got out of the rocking chair. <laughs> it just did not happen whatsoever. So a crushing defeat for the Imperium. Again, they're going to have to pull out something special for the next phase of the fall of Cadia, where it really matters because Creed is coming to town and he will not stand for this sort of abuse. This is just absolute savagery of the Imperium. Hardly any survivors, not even the brave Commissar.